Hi guys, it's Anastasia here as well as Kevin from AbsoluteGeeks.com and we're here with a special guest at Middle East Film and Comic Con, none other than Special Agent M from, Mar the, from the Marvel Universe. Hi, welcome to Dubai. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> so, Marvel. I suppose you can't tell us anything about the, the, the Phase 3 or anything that's coming up without having to kill us. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, uh, I like to have my secrets, and we have many. Uh, I know many things, and nothing I can share. Not even a little bit? Um, Ant-Man's going to be awesome. That's coming up real soon. Uh, you guys haven't seen a lot from it yet, uh, but you'll start to see a lot more in, in time. and. Uh, I think it's going to blow people away. Okay. Well, the Avengers Age of Ultron press uh, tour has just started recently. Yeah. Talk about talk a bit about the movie and about like what's what's going to what's it going to be like and how is it different from the first Avengers movie beyond the bigger cast and a lot, sure. you know, more explosions and other stuff. Yeah, I think there's a bigger complex story going on and you know, while you mentioned the larger cast, I think that does play an important part in the film because the larger cast adds to the relationships and I think relationships are a huge part of Marvel's Avengers Age of Ultron. Uh, between the characters within the Avengers, you know, whether it's Iron Man and Captain America or it's um, Hulk and say Cap or Hulk and Black Widow or Hawkeye and I don't want to give anything away. Uh, but, you know, th those relationships are part of who the Avengers are from our history and the comics. And that's character is core to our stories. Uh, and I think that really shines through throughout Age of Ultron. And then you add to the mix uh, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch uh, and uh, Ult uh, Ultron and Vision, who are, yeah, they are quote unquote synthetic beings, you know, whether they're androids or robots or whatever you want to describe them as. They are so fully fleshed out by James Spader as Ultron, and uh, like his Ultron is just, it's gonna be, you're gonna be floored by just his character and his tone, and maybe you sort of feel for him a little bit, where that's an important part for the villains. It's not just rah, 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 destroy the world, it's, there's something to them, there's meat on them bones. I think wasn't it Tom Hiddleston that said villains don't necessarily think they're wrong, but rather they're it's it's you know it's their way of this is right for them. Yeah. So and they're not necessarily wrong. And I think Marvel wow. has made Glenn, you know in their in their in their wrong. minds they you know wrong yeah when they start killing people. But yeah, the villains are but, often the heroes yeah. of their own story, yes. and they believe in what they're doing. Often the cinematic universe is directly influenced by what happens in the comic book universe, right? So. And an argument that the mainstream audience has is they don't know where to start with the comics. Right. So I just want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, I think, so if you look at Guardians of the Galaxy, that is a great example of something that no one in the, the mass audience knew about. And a lot of comic fans weren't even super familiar with them. I mean, there's a great core fan base for Guardians. But, you know, we saw so many more fans coming out because of the movie reading the comics and I think that is the most important influence on comics is a fan will go to the movies and they'll be like wow that's really cool wait that's based on a comic book oh look there's a comic book store or I'm gonna go online and I'm gonna look up some stuff and then they look they can find oh there are all these stories that I can get into that can give me more insight into the characters because that's what we all do we all see something we get into something and we want to learn more and for us, it allows us to provide new stories and new avenues and you know new opportunities. Look at how many Guardians of the Galaxy books we have right now. Rocket Raccoon, we've announced a Gamora book, we have Star-Lord, we have the main Guardians book, we have Guardians Team Up. I mean, that's a lot of comics and that's because the fan base demands it. They want more stories for these characters they love. And that is the, that is the greatest influence that the movies, I think, have on the comics is giving us more fuel to give them more. It's sort of circular. So my biggest question is when the footage leaked out and Deadpool's uh, test footage came up, one of the biggest audience demands was that we may have Deadpool movie, which we now have. So like, my question to you is like, 
Has there ever been a situation where a mass audience, a popular, a popular mass audience, actually fuels the direction of what Marvel wants to do? That's a good question. Um, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think so, because we plan so far in advance. Uh, you know, if you talk to Kevin Feige and Louis Desposito and, and the, the folks at Marvel Studios, they're, yeah, they're, they're like deep into what we're working on right now, but they're also thinking five, ten years ahead of time. They've got plans upon plans upon plans because they're geniuses, they're masterminds for that stuff. And similarly, in the comics, we're thinking very far ahead as well. I mean, we do these creative retreats for publishing, so you know, the writers and the editors are coming up with, okay, we know what we're publishing next week, but here's the story that's coming out in 18 months, in two years. And they're thinking about that stuff. So, you know, so we do see what the fans are into, like Guardians of the Galaxy, like I said. People really wanted more, and that'll help us. That'll be like, okay, great, we can add more. But it's not really, you know, we're not necessarily influenced by uh, a mass audience saying we want this or we want that without knowing that there's something to that because especially with the internet you know 50 people could be tweeting constantly that's 50 people you have to take a broader view of 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 things and really get a sense of what the real total fan base wants so daredevil um how different is the series from anything else that you've done and how tied in is it to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I know there is a, it's tied in a little bit and there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, but can you tell us about the series in a, in a perspective of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Um, hmm. <laughs> I... Well, because I, I don't want to give anything away. Uh, I've watched the show. I love it. I think it's great, and I'm watch. Really, I'm just watching reactions right now on fans on Twitter and you know all social media, and just watching them. Their heads are like exploding because it's this amazing show and great to react direction and uh, finding the ties to the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's just really cool. I I don't want to give too much away because I want I want fans to be able to experience it on their own. But yeah, really good. Watch Daredevil, guys. Come on. I'm binge watching that after the convention is over. <laughs> okay, so we look forward to seeing more of you here, and maybe in the next few years. I I know Marvel is doing a lot more next year as well, because every year they seem to be getting bigger yeah. and bigger. Uh, yeah, that's what I keep hearing, and it's pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, that's it. Hopefully, I see you next year. Hopefully.